Hi, yeah. Thank you for turning on the DVD. Uh, following John's adventures with Jesus, and we come sort of part, into the early part of the uh, the whole story when Jesus walks on the water, which must have been a, a frightening and dramatic and scary and just an awesome thing for John to experience. Mark doesn't tell us that Peter walked on the water as well, but but we know that uh, from the other Gospels. It's uh, but it says. As uh, when they saw him walking on the lake, they thought he was a ghost. They cried out because they all saw him, were terrified. Immediately he spoke to them and said, take courage, it's I, don't be afraid. Then he climbed into the boat with them and the wind died down. They were completely amazed for they had not understood about the loaves. Their hearts were hardened. And it just seems daft to me that on this adventure that Jesus is on, uh, that includes walking on water, that the, the reason they didn't understand it is because they didn't understand about the loaves. Not they were completely amazed because they, they thought they'd seen a ghost. They couldn't understand how Jesus did it. They were um, just frightened and everything else. But that they didn't understand about the loaves. And they didn't understand about the loaves because their hearts, hearts were hardened. And, and somehow... Jesus wanted them to understand about the loaves and for them to have softer hearts. And the whole point of the adventure at this point is soft heart, understanding about the loaves. And of course the loaves is the feeding of the 5,000. And the feeding of the 5,000 is the only uh, story from this time of Jesus' life that's included in all four Gospels. So it's really under, important that we understand about the loaves. And uh, it's an amazing story. It is an amazing story. And because... Uh, uh, you know, later on in the chapter, you know, Jesus says, you know, I am the bread of life. And uh, when that, that, the, the story you know, of, of the little boy, it's the boy bringing the, uh, the loaves and the fish. And uh, the, uh, in, in my version, uh, it said that the, the, the loaves were made of barley. And, and barley uh, was, was, was used by the, the poor people you know, to, to make breads. And, uh, so, and, uh, and, and this little boy brought this... Um, this barn is these, these five by lows. He offered little, um, but Jesus made it into something amazing, you know, yeah. to, to feed the, the 5,000. Absolutely. Yeah. So, in the story of the 5,000, they come to, to well, the, the crowds find Jesus, and the disciples helpfully want to send them away because they're getting hungry. And Jesus says, You give them something to eat. And, and I like that emphasis that Jesus puts on us to, to feed people, to look after people. It's our responsibility. We, so often our temptation is to send the people away and Jesus says, you give them something to eat. And then they do the calculation and work out that it'll take eight months wages, uh, which again is something that I'm very prone to do, to work out what's it going to cost, what's it going to cost financially, emotionally, time-wise, how are we going to do this? And, and then Jesus as you say, takes this poor boy's lunch and, and multiplies it and gives it to everyone and they all have enough left over. And then in John's Gospel, he stands up and says, I am the bread of life. And somehow when we give some, give, what we want to do is understand that we're giving Jesus to people. Mm -hmm. Understanding there's enough for everybody, that there's enough for us left over. You know, each of the disciples had the 12 they each had a basket full left over, enough for them for the day. And, and there's enough of Jesus uh, to go round. I think so, because you know, um, Jesus uh, sort of uh, tested Philip, didn't he? Didn't he, say, he said to Philip, you know, what do we do? You know, and Philip's I'm going to make Philip going, trying to fill his pockets, thinking, oh, we, we, don't, we, we don't have en enough money. But Jesus knew what he was going to do. And uh, I think sometimes, I think it's us just to trust in Jesus, you know, that he, he knows what he can do, you yeah. know, and, and uh, he knows that we can feed people, you know, by our, by our actions uh, and, and, and what we say and, and what we do, you know, and uh, he just wants us to do it, you know, and, and trust him to help us do it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say something in a minute. Oh, good, okay. The loaves thing is, is a, comes up several times in Mark's gospel uh, around this, uh, this time. There's a horrible incident where John the Baptist's head is given on a platter, which of course is not the sort of loaves. That's jealousy, that's, that's anger, that's cowardice, that's persecution, that's manipulation, that's control. All of those things are this bread 
of John the Baptist's head. Jesus uh, goes on uh, to, to, to talk about when you, no, just before that, he says, when you go out, don't take bread uh, because you're carrying my kingdom, you're carrying my name, you're carrying my message to the villages that I'm about to go to. You don't have to have bread. Uh, you, you're carrying me and they're amazed at what they can do in the name of Jesus. After the 5,000 are not understanding about the loaves, Jesus tries to explain it to them and he talks about clean and unclean food. He says it's not what goes into your mouth but what comes out of your mouth that's important. Then he has the odd incident with the Syrophoenician woman where he says that that uh, uh, you know this is the children's bread not for the dogs and and she says but even the dogs even people like us are allowed to take what what's left over from the children and this sort of glint in Jesus eye and the comedy there uh, between the two that that gets her her prayers answered because she's allowed to eat the bread even though it's the children's bread and then Jesus says beware of the yeast of the Pharisees do you still not see or understand are your hearts hardened this is in uh, mark 8:17 and then do you still not understand 8:21 uh, because they're looking for the uh, you know don't 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 be taken in by the religion and the lies and the rules of the pharisees there's something bigger here yeah i've really enjoyed this series about an adventure with jesus because it's helped me fall in love with jesus again and regardless of religion regardless of the rules it's Jesus that we come to. And it all blows my mind. I don't really understand the loaves. You've got 5,000 hungry people and Jesus just takes some bread and multiplies it. The same Jesus who turns water into wine. Um, I forget sometimes that this radical Jesus is the one that we serve. Um, and I, often my life doesn't look much like it. Yeah, well that's the challenge, isn't it? That's, that's the challenge. They've, the next story in Mark 8 is the blind man, do you see anything? And, uh, and he says, I see people, but they look like trees walking around. And then his eyes were opened, his size, sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. Mm. Disciples don't understand about the loaves. He sees everything clearly. And then, the next story, uh, Peter uh, is having a conversation with Jesus. Well, the disciples are having a conversation. And who do people say I am? Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? Peter answered, you are the Christ. And they get that revelation that the loaves is Jesus, that the, what we're giving out is Jesus, that what feeds the people is Jesus, that there's enough for everyone, there's enough left over. He is the bread from heaven. And, and as they get that, their hearts are softened because they, they can now receive this and give it away. And they understand about the loaves. And, and it's just an amazing revelation that uh, Jesus commends. This is not revealed to you by uh, flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And then he begins to commission them in a new way that we'll talk about next week. Yeah, I, I just, I, I like the bit when it's, when it's you new. Know, everyone, was, everyone was fed and there was enough left over as well. Yeah. They, they, were, they were picking up on it and putting it back in the, in the, in the baskets. Mm. And uh, I, I think, you know, we, we just have to um, trust in Jesus, you know, to, for him to use us. You know, you know we, um, there's plenty for, for, for him to, to go around to everybody, yeah. you know, and let's just, just do it, yeah. you know, and, and, yeah. and, 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 and be blessed by it, yeah. 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 Mm. Fantastic verse, isn't it? I think it's Isaiah. Come, buy and eat without money, without price. Yeah. You, can, you can have a meal tonight as you feast on the bread of life. Have a good time. See you in a bit. Bye-bye.